<laughs> it's kind of fun. I love doing these. I really do. Okay, hold on a second. So it's, it's a lot of fun for me. Okay. All right, we're live on my page. All right, cool. So there are going to be a bunch of people that are going to pop in, let Facebook do its job, let, let everybody know that we're live. So um, as people are popping in, let me just uh, grab this thing. I got some people that are popping in. Uh, and we grab this. Let me grab this link. And share it out. I'm going to share it in the group. Share. Sharing is caring. All right, everybody. So we are live this evening with tax experts. See, you're a CPA, right? Uh, I am a CPA. Okay. So, so T CPA, and I'm excited about this because um, I got to talking with, this is Jake Adams, everyone. And I got to talking with Jake. Uh, we met, I think, through a couple of different groups on Facebook, got to talking, networking, talking to one another. And um, Jake had uh, expressed interest in Instagram and just kind of getting his business out there and all the different platforms a little bit more effectively and getting his presence known. And we got to talking one day, I think it was last week, I was, uh, did a strategy call with him, got to talking to him. And this man knows his stuff. Uh, he was kind of explaining some things to me um, for specifically for the direct sales community, folks that are doing multi-level marketing and direct sales. And his brain is awesome. He knows how to save people and find people a lot of money. So I told him that it would be a great idea for him to do a Facebook live for us to do an interview so that we could kind of pick his brain a little bit further. So as you pop in, if you are someone who does direct sales, you're in any kind of small business, really, I feel like, but specifically direct sales, multi-level marketing, things like that. And you feel kind of stuck in your business or you're not quite sure what you can write off, what you can't write off, things like that. This guy's, this is the guy, this is the guy to ask questions to. So um, I'm going to open it up to you, Jake. I, I, tell us a little bit about yourself so that we know who you are, and then I'm going to ask you a few questions. Yeah, so uh, yeah, just, just like you mentioned, I'm a, I'm a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. Uh, I've been a CPA in the state of California for, uh, for over three years now. Um, before that, I was, I was doing tax preparation for a couple different CPA firms. I actually got my start off with uh, H&R Block. Uh, almost 10 years ago. So I uh, definitely have uh, some experience there working with tax returns and, uh, and finding those tax deductions for small businesses. Um, about a year ago, I, I just got really bored with, uh, with tax preparation and, you know, just the grind of tax preparation. If you know any CPAs, you know that they like to work, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week during tax season. And I kind of just, you know, want to get uh, away from that and, and really offer a lot more value to my clients. Um, so I, I, I sat down with a couple of them over lunch and I said, you know, what are some things that I can really do that, that would just have this huge wow factor, right? That you would just love that I can help you out with. And the, the resounding answer that I got from, from every single client that I had uh, and currently still have is that they want to save money on taxes. So what I did was I went out and I invested thousands of dollars on tax strategy books, on courses, on seminars, on webinars. Uh, really so I could be an expert on tax savings for small business owners. Um, and just like we're talking with here, the, 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 uh, the network marketing community is a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that they are a small business and there's so many tax breaks out there for small business owners. Even if you don't feel like you're a small business owner, you know, there's still a small business owner in the eyes of the IRS. Um, and then really, you know, why I do what I do is, is because, you know, there's so many people out there that are struggling financially. Um, either you're living paycheck to paycheck or you just work, wish that you could have an extra thousand dollars to take a, an awesome vacation or, you know, if, if an extra thousand dollars would just help, pay, you know, pay a couple bills or pay down some credit card debt. And, um, and really through tax savings, we can get a lot of those savings back um, and we can make, a, you know, household financial matters a lot easier to deal with. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. See, and I, and I love that you do that. And I love that you, um, you're, you're looking to help out that community because as, as you say, you know, people are living paycheck to paycheck and when they find a product or a service that they really love that much and they say, Hey, I'm going to jump into this. And they don't know, nope, they don't really know what they're doing. Right. Like a, a lot of times just like, Hey, I really like this shake. Now I want to sell it too. And they become a part of this team, but there's not really anybody that guides them, takes their hand and says, Hey, here's everything that you need to know from a tax perspective on, you know, this is, this is in fact a business, right? Like you said. So, um, one of the questions that I did want to ask you about, like I said, we, we did speak last week. You and I did. We had a great strategy call and we got to talk about, um, I get to pick your brain a little bit and find out the different types of things that you do bring to that community. So one of the questions that I did want to ask you is um, specifically like fitness MLMs or um, any kind of fit, fit MLM. Um, you, you're mentioning that a typical fitness MLM, like a mom or a parent they're, they, you know, they've got kids, right? So you were mentioning um, that you could do like tax-free income. How, what, what exactly is that and how does that work? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually one thing that I love talking about is tax-free income. Um, and really there's a lot of ways that we can get tax-free income. Uh, there's a couple things that we can do with kids. Um, we can bring kids into the business you know, if you're if you're running a, a, an MLM, your, your kids are probably already helping out anyway, whether they're they're stuffing gift baskets or, or doing doing mailers. Um, you know, there's a lot of things we can do with with putting the kids on, on payroll. Uh, we can save up to six thousand uh, dollars a year tax free income. Uh, we can also put money into a retirement plan um, for the kids as well. And by putting the money into a retirement plan, we can save uh, tax free for their college education, which beats the pants off any 529 plan or any other college savings plan out there. Uh, because it's it's 100% tax free. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, uh, corporate uh, tax deductions that we can find uh, if if you're if you're ready uh, to explore the uh, the amazing world of of corporate taxation. Uh, the corporate taxation gives tons and tons of of tax free uh, benefits and availability. Um, one of the one of the one of my favorite things with a corporation is you can actually rent out your home to your corporation, uh, which is tax free income. And that can save thousands of dollars uh, every year. That's awesome. So, I mean, like that right there, like people don't really think about that, right? So um, we're getting some folks that are hopping in. I think we're probably going to get some questions pretty soon. Um, another thing that you were mentioning to me, like, you know, that I just went to Disney last week or, or the beginning of the week um, with my family. And you were mentioning to me when I told you I was going to Disney, you're like, hey, you know, that actually could be another thing that you could write off. Tell us how that might work if there's a family that, you know, they're getting ready to go on a trip to Disney or to, you know, any kind of a, a theme park like that. How would that be a write-off for them? Yeah, so that's a great question. And, and really, any, any business travel is fully tax deductible. Um, and really, it just has to find, you just have to find a business reason for going, right? So like, like for instance, your, your case, you just went to Orlando. So maybe you wanted to look at an investment property. Or maybe you wanted to look at a rental, right? You could say, oh, well, I'm going to go to, to Orlando maybe once or twice a year. It'd be great to have a, a vacation home there or, or a rental home uh, that we can rent on Airbnb or, um, you know, uh, FRBO, one of, those, one of those rental sites, or just have a manager that, that would rent it out. So by, by looking into actually starting a business and creating an investment uh, or money generating activity, anything like that is a tax deduction. So, and it could also be outside of an investment, really anything that, that creates additional uh, income or creates a cash flow coming in. So that could be things like finding referral partners out in Orlando, right? If you're doing a beach body uh, program, or you are, if, if you're a beach body, uh, beach body network marketer, could you find another person that's doing beach body in Orlando? And could you take them out to lunch or dinner to find out? Some, some of the ways that they're growing their business that you maybe didn't think about. Or, you know, even if you're going outside of Beachbody, maybe, you know, Beachbody is, is fitness, but vitamins and health related items would be really good. So maybe you have an Herbalife uh, person or maybe find someone with Herbalife or someone that maybe can, can they, they work with the same types of people, but they're not directly competitors to yours. So by finding those people, you can maybe get together, have lunch or dinner and say, Hey, what are some ways that we can work together? Um, and then the rules for business travel is it has to be greater than 50% every day and greater than 50% of the whole trip. 
So just to give you an example, let's say you wanted to go Monday through Wednesday, right? So the, the a standard day is eight hours or business day is eight hours. So more than more than 50% would be four hours and one minute. So as long as you were discussing business, you were trying to find referrals or discussing business or, or trying to grow your business for at least four hours and one minute, then it becomes a business day. And then if it's a three-day trip, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Monday and Tuesday would have to be then business related. So on Wednesday, you could basically have the, the day personal and do whatever you wanted. So the nice thing about that four hour rule is it gives you literally the rest of the day to do whatever you want. So in your case, heading off to Orlando with the kids, as long as you found something to do from let's say 8 a.m. to noon, 12.01, and as long as you had that time for business, then you had the entire afternoon, entire evening to play at Disney World, play in Orlando, play in, in Universal, any, anything else. Um, and that's not to say that you have to go to Orlando or you have to go to you know a, a vacation destination like that. You know That can even work towards if you want to go visit your, your family in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or you know, in, um, you know, somewhere in Texas, you can just say, Hey, we're going to find someone that's, that's really doing great, uh, in another network marketing space, you know, that you'd like to meet with or an investment property is great, right? Cause you can invest in rental properties anywhere across the U S. Okay. No, that's awesome. Uh, let me make sure I unmuted myself. I did. Okay. Um, yep. so, so I have, I have a couple questions coming in. So, um, Tim Vera asks if I'm running my business out of my home and it's paid off, how much of my yearly taxes can I write off? Uh, so that's a great question. So Tim's probably referring to the office and home and the office and home. If you ask a lot of CPAs and tax professionals, they, they usually say, don't do it. Um, and the reason that a lot of CPAs and tax professionals, they say, don't write, don't write off your home or don't do an office and home uh, is for a couple reasons. Number one is previously, it was a huge IRS audit red flag. And a, a lot, and you just don't want to, a lot of people just don't even want to deal with an IRS audit. So if it comes to, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing is, is it was really only worth a couple hundred dollars. Um, at a 15%, 25% tax bracket, you're really only saving between $100 and $300 um, per year by doing the office and home. So the question is, is do you want to spend, you know, let's say $200 on reducing your chance of an IRS audit risk? And the answer for most people is, yeah, I'd spend $200 to reduce my IRS audit risk. So a lot of people weren't taking advantage of the office and home, which is very disturbing because by, by taking the office and home, what it does is it unlocks your travel between your home and your first place of business. So let me give you an example. Let's say you wanted to go from your home to Orlando for a business trip. If you didn't take the office and home, your first drive from your house to Orlando would not be tax deductible because you didn't go from a business place to a business place. You went from your home mm. or personal residence to the business. Um, so basically what happens is, is by taking the office and home, it treats it as a business location and it unlocks all of those business miles. So I can't give you a dollar amount as far as how much this is gonna save you because it's different for every person and it's different as far as how many miles you're driving and where you're driving. You know, but just to give you a, a, a basic example, um, you know, if you live, let's say five miles away from a quote unquote office, if you have an office, or you go to an office or you go to you know, an office to work. Um, if you're not taking the office and home, you're losing out on the five miles to that location. And then the five miles back. Um, if you want it, if you're doing a, a multi-level marketing MLM, um, you're doing, um, you know, network marketing and you go to Starbucks and you want to go meet uh, a girlfriend and go have coffee and talk about talk about Herbalife or Beachbody, um, you're going to lose out on that on the, the five miles to Starbucks and the five miles back. Um, so that's 10 miles, 10 miles at a, at a, the standard rate is 50 cents a mile. That's five bucks. That adds up fast. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, Jake. Thank you. Yeah. So um, another question that I have actually has come from my husband. He wants to know, he just became a licensed Disney travel agent. And he says, can I write off my visit to Disney as a site research? That's a great question. And uh, really comes down to, do, does that help you in your business? Is that going to, to create additional revenues? And is that going to help you be better at your job or better at what you're doing to make more money? 
And if the answer is yes, then it's 100% tax deductible. The problem that you, the, or the one thing you don't want to get into, or the problem that that a lot of um, travel agents have is, oh, I'm going to go right off this cruise, and or in your case, right off this Disney vacation, but there's really no way of tangibly showing that they're going to help a client or or a potential customer with that same travel destination. So with Disney, it's actually I, I want to say even safer than just the typical travel agent because if you're doing a Disney vacation, it's very easy to say that well, because I have a better understanding and more intricate knowledge of Disney, then I have a better ability to sell that and making more commissions. And of course, the more money and the more commissions you can make, the more you can justify those write-offs or those expenses. Excellent. No, that's actually, that's a good point. And I think with my husband, it'd be a little bit different. Um, some travel agents are strictly just travel. He does travel and he does trade shows. So a lot of times when I mean, we would go out to Orlando, if we stay at a specific um, hotel or a specific um, a specific site, if there's a room in there that would allow for, you know, for trade show or some sort of convention or a group meeting, then that would be something that he would have to inspect and make sure that um, that would be conducive. So I think that's a great question. And I'm glad that yeah. he asked that to you. Um, what yeah. was the question that I wanted to ask you about? There was something else about um, the Disney thing. I, I, I feel like we're, have to, we're gonna have to go back to that because there was something that I, I remember I wanted to ask you and then I forgot. Um, well, so we talked, well, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, one thing that I would recommend is if you're gonna be doing that, anything like a, like a Disney travel agent or anything like that, maybe just do an ebook. Or, or do a blog. And the more active that you can show that you're out there doing um, advertising and that you're using your knowledge to help uh, increase your sales, right? Anything you can prove to the IRS in case you do get audited, of course, we don't want you to get audited. But if you get audited, they're, they're really gonna look for that, what's referred to the burden of proof. Mm -hmm. And do you have the reason to doing what you're doing? And if you can show that you're actively blogging and you have an ebook and you're showing all this stuff as far as what you're doing and what you're learning and, and, and the clients that are going on to your, your, your funnel and saying, yeah, I get, you know, show me this free ebook and you can show that you're actually getting clients that way. You know, that's really what they're going to look for um, is, is do you have revenue coming in and, and are you really showing and sharing this with people? I think that is probably my favorite part of this entire interview right there, Jake. I have been hounding my husband to write up some sort of content, some kind of blog, something. So I'm going to make sure that I get on that with him because, again, here you are. You just said that's a tangible backup for some sort of a write-off like that. So that's awesome. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, oh, the other thing that you wanted to talk about that we wanted to highlight was health savings. So you're mentioning that. So I would definitely want you to speak to that and let people know how they can write off health savings. Yeah. And this is actually one of my, my favorite uh, topics to talk about um, because my wife has actually been in a hospital um, a couple of times uh, in the past year. Um, and wow. we've had hospital bills over $16,000. And wow. so, yeah. And if, and if you're like most people that, that, you know, can't afford or don't think that they can afford a, a decent medical plan or you're, or you're self-employed um, and you don't, you, you know, you're not protected by, you know, an employer plan and you're just kind of out there on the, on the market. There's a lot of really great um, options for you, tax, tax-free options. Um, one of them is a health savings account or an HSA, which you've probably heard of. Mm -hmm. And a health savings account, as long as you have a high deductible health plan, uh, you can set up a HSA or health savings account um, through a couple different companies, they're really low cost, um, usually about 50, less than 50 bucks a year. And, um, and then with that health savings account, you can save, you can put money tax free into the health savings account and then use that for health related expenses. Um, then there's also a flexible spending account, which you've probably heard of, of, a, of as a cafeteria plan or a flexible spending. There's a lot of limitations to those. I don't even really like to talk about about those, but I'll, I'll bring it up to you just, just because it's a, it's a health uh, savings um, arrangement. And then the other thing that I really like is called a health reimbursement account or an HRA. And this is actually section 105 in IRS code. But basically what it allows you to do is as a self-employed entrepreneur, Schedule C, husband and wife, um, by bringing on your spouse as an employee of the business, you can reimburse them for all health related costs out of pockets. So this is everything from co-pays to deductibles to chiropractor visits, acupuncturists, 
um, glass. Wow. Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, the list is like 50, 60, you know, things long. I can even go through everything, but really what it allows you to do is create tax-free income by reimbursing those medical expenses. And so, and as opposed to paying the 15% self-employment tax, plus let's say 15% uh, federal income tax, you know, that's 30%. So it allows you to take 30% off of all of your healthcare related expenses. That is, that's, that's amazing. I did not know that. That's, that's a really good little knowledge bomb you just dropped there. I had, I had no idea about that. Um, so yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a really huge topic, actually. I, I think there are a lot of people out there that are going to, you know, if they're not watching it live, they watch the replay, they're going to go, wow, I, I, I didn't realize that. I certainly didn't realize that. That's really cool. Um, yeah. And, and with everything that I do, I try to make it super easy. Um, so the health reimbursement account is actually only four forms that you need to fill out. Um, so you can fill it out within a matter of 10 to 15 minutes. So it's not some long drawn out process. It's not something you have to, you know, have an accountant do up for you. It's something you can, you can do, you know, over a glass of wine while watching your favorite show on TV um, and everything. <laughs> yeah. And, and really everything that I try to do, I try to make it as easy as possible. And um, so that you can do a lot of it on your own. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So speaking of that, uh, of, you know, we, we just named off three things that are really huge about, you know, saving money and how to save money and how um, one of the things that we talked about last week, again, was how you can help people who are part of direct sales when they are trying to recruit and attract that downline, why you, you can help them make that statement to those prospective downline folks and say, Hey, it's not that you can't afford to join this thing It's how can you afford not to? And I would love for you to speak to that, to those people who are trying to recruit and they get that no, no, no slammed in their face all the time. What's a reason why this could be a really fantastic opportunity for someone? Yeah. So that, that's a great question. And, and it's, it's true. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the, the multi-level marketing, the network marketing people that I'm talking to, um, they say the biggest challenge is when they're talking with someone as a, as a prospect or a downline prospect is that they say, I just can't afford it. Um, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to show that through the tax, through the tax code and, and through kind of, I hate to say manipulating or taking advantage of it, but that's basically what you're doing. If you're taking advantage of the tax code um, to find these tax deductions, to, um, to, to save money on your ta taxes that are only available to small business owners. So the typical multi-level marketing network marketing person is coming into it with a, with a clean slate. They've never been a small business owner before. They've never been self-employed. They really don't know what the tax breaks or benefits of um, are, are, are as far as small business or self-employed. And, and really they're, they're losing out because they don't understand all the write-offs that you can take, right? So you know, every time you go to Starbucks or out to lunch, as long as you're talking business with, with someone, that's a write-off, right? The trips mm -hmm. and the travel that we talked about, those are write-offs. Um, you can write off all your cruises, all your travel, you know, um, uh, dinners and Starbucks and coffees and, and different things like that. And it's really just switching things from a personal aspect to a business aspect. And as long as we can put some sort of business aspect to it, then it becomes a tax deduction. So really what we're doing is we're trying to find by, by switching things from a personal expense to a business expense, you're not only not paying the personal income taxes on it, which is saving you 30%, but you're also getting a write-off, a business write-off for it, which could save you an additional 30 to 40 percent. So a lot of times the swing between the two amounts are anywhere from 60 to 70 percent as far as the savings that you're actually getting by doing the by changing things from personal expense to a business expense. And it's interesting because a lot of people don't realize that and they don't think of it that way. Um, and then also, like I mentioned, the, the health savings account, the health reimbursement account, um, things like these that are written into the tax code that are available for all businesses. You just have to know where to go and, and you know, how to find these things and, and putting them into place. But once they're in place, they're really easy to do, really easy to maintain and can save you thousands and thousands of dollars um, on your taxes. That's awesome. So I, I actually, as you were just saying that, I was remembering the question that I wanted to ask you. And I don't know how this works anymore um, from, a, from a tax perspective. How much does being an active business owner on social media play into um, th th that whole backing up, uh, you know, whatever you're doing. Like for instance, you were mentioning the four hour and one minute time of, you know, a trip, right? So if I'm out there and I'm, you know, I'm a digital marketer, that's my business. My husband's a travel guy. That's his business. If I'm out there and I'm spending literally almost my entire day 
documenting the fact that I'm out there and showing people different things, would that be something that, that would suffice the whole, you know, backing up, documenting it as opposed to writing a blog? If somebody doesn't write a blog, but they're really active on social media, does that work? Well, it really depends on, on the extent of the expense that you're trying to take, right? So let's say you want to go to, I don't know, Costa Rica or, <laughs> you know, let's say Costa Rica, right? And you're like, okay, um, I'm going to do a, you know, um, all the social media consulting and, and things that you're doing, right? Do you really need to be in Costa Rica to be a social media consultant or, or do all the things that you're doing with Instagram? Mm-hmm. And the answer is probably no. And if the answer is no, then why are you taking the expense, right? So it goes back to what what you, what you said about your husband is, you know, as a Disney licensed or or certified or whatever um, agent, right. Is there a benefit of learning more about Disney and spending more time in the Orlando area? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I mean, Disney's only in two places in the, in the U S right. So whether he goes to LA or he goes to Orlando, either one of those trips is going to help him in his business. So that's a great reason to be, let's say, a Disney agent because you can fly or go to L.A. anytime you want to, um, as long as it's for business. As long as we're finding a business reason of going, then it's a then it's a tax deduction. Perfect. No, that's 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 yeah. good, and I think that a lot of people might that could easily be misconstrued. You know, some people might, might misunderstand how that works. So um, I yeah. wanted to make sure that I asked that question because some people would be like, Oh, I could write this one off and I can write this off. But really, and truly you got to be careful with that. Yeah. So, so, um, so let, let me give you an example. Let's say, let's say you do a mommy, a, a mommy blog, right? So you, okay. you want to know, you want to give, you know, t- uh, t- tips for moms in the area. So there's a new playground that opens up or it's an indoor playground and it's, you know, 14 bucks for your kids to go into. Well, is that a reasonable expense so that you can write a blog or an article to let other moms know in your area? Is it a good, is it a good investment? Should you should go, should you not go? Yeah. You know, 14 bucks per kid. I'd say that's, that's a reasonable amount to pay. Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, things like water parks or indoor playgrounds, anything like that, you would, you would spend money on your kids to tell other moms about those things that you're doing with your kids. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's more than reasonable. That's awesome. No, it's a, that's great. That's a really good little tip, man. I hope that people pop in and they get the nuggets out of this. Cause this is some really good information. So we talked about, um, the, the tax rate income, we talked about what types of things we can write off when we travel locally or wherever, uh, as far as mileage, vacations, things like that. We talked about the health savings. We talked about attracting that downline whenever they're trying to recruit people into their business. I feel like, and Tim actually said this in the comments, he said, you know, I feel like I could talk to this guy forever. I feel like I could pick your brain forever. Unfortunately, I don't have forever, but I feel like you've got a place where people can go where they can ask you these types of questions pretty regularly. So do you have a website that people can go to and what types of things would, do you offer on your website? Yeah, so I actually set up a website specifically for this purpose. Um, so my website is easytaxsavings.com. Okay. And when you when you register through easytaxsavings.com, uh, you're going to get a free a template, which is going to, it's a tax savings template. It's going to walk you through uh, three pages of those, te- those commonly missed tax deductions and the frequently asked questions that I get, that's going to help you save some money right away. Um, and then also part of easytaxsavings.com is a membership site uh, for the low price of $9 and 99 cents a month. Um, you can join in. I know Trish is like, what? <laughs> my, my- my accountant told me I should pay, I should charge more for it. <laughs> Your accountant told you that. <laughs> That's great. So, so on the membership side, I've actually ha- have um, hundreds of hours of pre-recorded video content uh, oh, wow. and, and blogs and news, article, news articles and things that I've, that I've created, content that I've created um, that really answers a lot of those frequently asked tax questions. Um, and then I've also built in a community, a Facebook community into that group. Uh, where it's not only a static group, uh, or not, not only a static membership site, but it's also a group where you can go on, you can ask tax questions. Um, so maybe there's, there's a, uh, something that I'm not thinking of as far as a tax deduction, right? So let's say for the mommy's group, right? Maybe, maybe I can only think of two or three things you could write off, but maybe there's someone that's doing that already that can think of four or five things. Um, that would that would give you some great tax you know tax advice and tax deductions. So it really creates a community uh, that we're getting those people together to share that tax advice um, a lot more than I can as just a single 
single person. Um, and then also with that, you can also ask additional questions to me. Um, and then I love to respond to, to tax questions via, via video, the same way that we're kind of going back and forth right here. Um, and then what I do is once I, once I recorded a, a video in response to a tax question, I'll put that up on the membership site um, so, that, so that anyone can, can benefit from the knowledge that, uh, that I really want to just share and get out there. No, that's, that's and, awesome. Yeah, that's great. Hold on, let me... Um... Keep talking. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to interrupt you. Yeah. And, it, and, and the biggest thing um, and the biggest challenge that, that I've that I've talked with people about is that that a lot of times their CPA or their tax professional is just not giving them the information that they need mm -hmm. or that they don't know what they don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they're sitting in front of their CPA and they say, well, how do I save money? And they're like, I don't know, put money in a retirement plan. Right. But not, but not everyone can afford to put money in their retirement plan. And, and that's money you're not going to see for another 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right. Um, so really, retirement is not a great strategy for most people. And really what I want to do is with this is give you all the options that are available to you. So finding that tax-free income where it can really creates the savings immediately, as opposed to you know tax savings 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road. And, um, and then also with that is, like I said, create a community in a way that you can get uh, instant feedback or, or feedback from, from a, a diverse, a diverse uh, kind of range of people that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that might be able to give advice that I couldn't think of. That's fantastic. And I have to tell you, um, this is one of the reasons why I was so excited to connect with you and, and to, to work with you is because I personally, I, I have been in the multi-level marketing direct selling uh, industry for a while. I personally do not know of any tax professional out there that's providing the service the way that you are. So I feel like you're really paving the way right now for the folks out there who need this kind of advice, who need this kind of service, who need to ask those questions and need a community like this where they can pick each other's brains. Because again, like you said, you're one person, but when you open it up to an entire community, there's going to be a mom out there or a dad out there who's in one niche and one type of direct selling company that came across something that they didn't realize. And guess what? Now they got Jake. They can say, hey, Jake, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. What can I do with this? And so other people can see off of that. And that's that's an incredible opportunity. So um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I mean, I, again, I've had a few opportunities to talk with Jake now. He's got a very good brain on that in that head of his. Um, this man is extremely knowledgeable. And I can just I can see the passion that he has to really help out this kind of a, a community. Um, and again, you know, it's not just direct sales, but I think that it's it's important that these folks have somebody like you to kind of be their warrior from a tax perspective. And um, and I think that's really fantastic. So so thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, is there anything, hold on a second, other than your website, is there any, is there any other place that the group, do you have a free group? Is there someplace that you'd like to send people other than the website itself? Do you have a personal page? Do you have an email address? Yeah. So uh, I have a Facebook group, a free Facebook group. It's easy tax savings. Uh, you could probably okay. just type that right into the Facebook uh, search bar, easy tax savings. Okay. Uh, that's a free group that you're more than welcome to jump on anytime. Um, again, I don't, I don't, answer um, the questions on there as, as actively and as in-depth as I do to my membership site. Uh, I, I like to leave that for my members uh, specifically. Okay. Uh, okay. And then also they can reach out to me. It's uh, jake at easytaxsavings.com. Uh, and then also, now I'm not really into Twitter or anything like that, so I can't give you a bunch of handles and this and that. So really the best that's way okay. is- That's no, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so really the best way to find me is on uh, find me on Facebook, uh, Jake Adams CPA and uh, Easy Tax Savings. Perfect. EasyTaxSavings.com, everyone. I really do hope that you um, that you do reach out to Jake if you have any questions, that you take advantage of that membership site. I mean, there's just, he's got killer value out there and killer content out there. I mean, he's literally given away the farm and just so much great advice. I feel like he could help pretty much any kind of small business owner in, in that aspect. And um, if you um, if you would like to share this out, if you know anybody who you think could use this kind of service, this kind of help, on a regular basis, please feel free to share this Facebook Live. And otherwise, I want to say thank you so much again, Jake. I really appreciate you uh, meeting with me this evening. And um, I hope everybody gets uh, as much gold nuggets out of this as I have. <laughs> great. Thanks, Trish. All right. Take it easy. Have a great night, Jake. You too. All right. Bye-bye.